Okay, welcome everybody. It is really fabulous to be with you all tonight and I thank you for joining with me. I'm really looking forward to sharing um, what we are going to share tonight, um, which is going to be really interesting. So to get us a little bit more present, please close your eyes. And if you want to put your hand on your heart center, please do that. And take a slow, deep breath in. And slowly breathe out. And again, a slow, deep breath in. And slowly breathe out. And again, a deep, deep breath in. Slowly breathe out. And put one hand on your sexual center, on your genitals. And as you breathe in, breathe in all the way down, all the way down to your sexual center, all the way down to your genitals. Just imagine that your breath is going all the way down. And as you breathe out, <sighs> breath is moving up your body. And again, Deep breath into your sexual center. And deep breath out. And one more deep, deep breath in, deep breath all the way down your body to your sex, to your root, to the base of your body. And Breathe out and keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. And become aware of your sexual center and relax your genitals as much as you can. Relax the lips of your yoni. Relax your clit. Relax inside your yoni. Relax your balls, relax the shaft of your cock, the head. Deeply relax. And now take a slow deep breath in from that relaxed sex. And as you breathe in, draw that energy, that energy, that deep relaxation of your sex rod all the way up to the top of your head, all the way up to the top of your head and hold it there, hold it there, hold it there. Ah. Mm. And again, from that deep relaxation in your sex, breathe all the way up the middle of your body. Draw that energy up the middle of your body, up the middle of your body to the top of your head and hold it there, hold it and... One more, the last deep breath for now from that deeply relaxed sex. All the way up the middle of your body to the top of your head and hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that, and <sighs> beautiful. And just feel your body. 
feel the weight of your body wherever you're sitting or lying, wherever your body's touching what's beneath it. And feel the earth beneath that. Just be aware of the earth beneath you, however far beneath you it is. And become aware of whatever you feel in your body. Whatever sensation you're aware of, anywhere in your body. Become aware of your breath moving in and out of your body. Gentle breath, the breath of life. And become aware of your heart center in the middle of your chest. And become aware of a smile, a small, gentle smile in your heart. The warmth of the smile. Maybe there's a tingle with the smile. Let the smile spread to your face. Gentle smile and grin. And slowly open your eyes. Good. That was fabulous. Thank you for sharing that with me. Mm, deeply relaxed now. Okay, so we are starting to talk about slow sex. And I thought we would talk a little bit about this, but it's one of the, for me, it's such an important aspect of, of, of sexuality, such an important aspect of everything that I teach. Um, and I wrote a piece about it. Um, it's on Facebook, it's on my website, it's on my Facebook page, it's on Instagram. So I hope you guys will have read it or we'll have a look at that. Um, there's a lot in it and uh, we'll talk about it and we'll talk about how to really have that incredible slow sex and how beautiful and how powerful that is and what it does. So we are so used to having what I call friction sex and friction sex is really it's kind of genitals rubbing against each other or a finger rubbing against a clit or a hand rubbing against a cock. And it's very much orgasm based because that's the goal of that. And it's very much the friction that causes the stimulation. And we get so used to that. So to understand that, it's important to understand a little bit of how our bodies work. So we work and we live in terms of patterns. Everything that we do is a pattern. Our patterns are in our mind and in our body. And that's what's important to understand as far as this is concerned, because the body has its own patterns, often regardless of what the mind would like to do. The body does what it knows how to do in any situation. And a lot of that is from what your body is used to doing. So if you are used to having sex in a certain way, and that's what your body gets used to. And as soon as you start thinking about sex, that whole pattern begins in your body. So your muscles, your nervous system, even the position of your body all add to the pattern of that. And what happens then is you simply do what it is that you do in the pattern. So very often in that, we actually have the expectation of an experience rather than the experience because it follows the pattern. So we think we know exactly what it's going to be and exactly 
what it's going to do for us. It's kind of like, you know, you go to your favorite restaurant or some place that you go often and there's a dish there that you really, really like and you order it every time. More times than not, you're ordering the expectation rather than the dish because it's always going to be slightly, slightly different. But we tend to taste the expectation and we do the same thing when it comes to sex. We have the expectation of the experience. And when we focus on a particular goal, and for most of us, the goal of sex is, is orgasm. And I need to put this disclaimer because it's really important. Sometimes people kind of misconstrue things. Orgasms are fabulous. Orgasms are wonderful. I love orgasms. I spend lots of time teaching people about orgasms and how to have different kinds of orgasms. And orgasms are wonderful. Orgasms are not all that there is when it comes to sex and pleasure. There is this world of amazing possibilities. And when all that we are doing is focusing on orgasm in this whole stream of literally limitless possibility, we are focusing on one stream. It's like this whole amazing delta. All these incredible rivers. I was looking at a picture the other day of the Okavango Delta of how enormous and vast this is. And all these little streams that run into each other and run to everywhere. Orgasm is one stream, not two, one stream in this whole field of possibilities. So when we allow ourselves to actually be in the field of pleasure and in the possibility of pleasure, that's when we start to expand our experience. We start to expand sensation. And that's when we start to understand that there's more than just the friction sex and just the orgasm. And one of the most amazing ways to do this, to experience this, and to start becoming aware of it, is to slow everything down. So when we're doing something really quickly, we don't often feel it's simply a stimulation. So there's a wonderful way to experience this. Hold your hands up like this. And if somebody's next to you, you can even do this with their hands. And rub your hands quite quickly. Not hard, just quite quickly. And just be aware of how much you feel, of what you feel. And now do that really slowly. Same pressure. So when you go slowly, you become aware of how much more you feel, of subtlety, of, um, of nuance, of sensation. So when we slow down, we actually start to feel. And when we start to feel, we become more present in our body. We start to be less in the mind and more in the body. And this is really interesting because for so many of us, sex without thought, without fantasy, is almost an impossibility. Getting to orgasm without that stimulation, firstly the physical stimulation, and secondly the mental stimulation, makes that a really difficult thing because we are so patterned to be with that. So when we slow everything down, we start to feel differently. We really start to be aware of the sensations that we're feeling. What happens next when we slow down is that our nervous system actually starts to relax a little bit. Now, we live in a world of incredible amounts of stimulation. And even though a lot of us are not going out a lot at the moment, the levels of stimulation have changed, but they're just as constant. And one of the reasons for that is this electronic world. 
So for so many of us in, in the past months, this has been the way that we live. This is the way that we work. So the devices on our computers, our phones, our tablets, everything else have become such incredible stimulation. Beyond that, we've had this lifetime of endless stimulation coming into us. And just as a, as a digression, it's one of the reasons that meditation time, breathing time, just still time is so important simply for our nervous system. Never mind all the other amazing things that it does, but for the nervous system more than anything else to just have that time to actually allow itself to relax, to start to regenerate. And very often, the, the stimulation that we have, we hold on to that so tightly because we don't know what's going to happen when we let that go. So we just hold on. So when we start to slow down, that actually starts to go, oh, and it can actually take a beautiful, beautiful breath. And when the nervous system slows down, we can actually start to feel. We start to be more present. The emotions that we feel, the feelings that we feel, and the sensation become more intense. And from there, it becomes easier to really connect with someone, to really feel that intimacy. Because intimacy is from the heart. Now, the way that a lot of people have sex a lot of times, it's not intimate. And there's always this big discussion, you know, the difference between having sex and making love. So I've come to define sex, if we want to do that, as a, a goal-oriented genital activity. And the goal of that is normally an orgasm. So it's about an orgasm. So you and I are having sex. You have an orgasm. I have an orgasm. Everybody's really happy. If I make you come awesomely, then I get to wear a Superman t-shirt tomorrow, and everybody is fantastically happy. Making love is very, very different because it's not always about the goal and more than anything else it's about intimacy intimacy is the connection that comes from our heart it comes from somewhere deeper inside of us if all that we're doing is focusing on the orgasm and the stimulation we need to reach orgasm, then we totally get lost in our own little world. Because we go into our heads, we go into the thoughts, the fantasies, everything that we need to make that happen. And when we're doing that, we're not in that present moment. We're somewhere else. We're in the moment and we're somewhere else. In that space of intimacy, we are much more connected. And we can connect more with each other. So slow is one of the most beautiful ways to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been talking a lot today with people. And in that slowness, the energy of sex starts to happen because when we are contracted, so think about what happens when you get close to orgasm. Muscles get tight, your breathing gets quick, <gasps> then you have this big explosion and you scream or shout, or if you're the quiet type, you just go, oh, that was nice. And that's all. That's contraction. And in that contraction, energy can't move. When we slow down, we relax. And the more that we relax, the more that energy can move through the body. And that becomes a much fuller, a much deeper 
a much bigger experience. And intimacy deepens that, and that deepens intimacy. So those two become these incredible partners in this amazing, amazing dance. And I'm not saying that you can't have intimacy in other experiences, because of course you can. And that's a lot to do with the intention that you bring to the experience, the way that you are in the experience. But when we are so focused on what's happening in our minds and what we need to do to get to that orgasm, then intimacy is not a deep part of that. In that slowness, that's where there's a much greater depth of connection. And then we feel more sensation expands. So if you do this again, do this again for a second. And you feel what you feel. And now do that really, really slowly. Really slowly. You'll be aware of how you feel everything, every millimeter. And now stop, but keep your awareness there on your hand. And you can still feel that sensation. If you keep your awareness there, maybe that changes, expands, that goes somewhere else, it becomes something else. So stopping becomes amazing. And breathing becomes amazing. And then when you breathe, you're breathing into that sensation, into that feeling. And that sensation, that feeling moves through the body and it expands. So in all of that, we get to slow down in enormously and we get to feel so much more we also start to have in that space a much greater sense of control of our sexuality now for men this is often a really big thing and of course for women because if it's a big thing for men it's a big thing for women why is it such a big thing for women? Because as a man, when you can control your sexuality, that's when you can take your partner to much, much deeper places of pleasure that require time, that require time, time to get to those deeper places of pleasure. The time of arousal for deeper experiences um, is longer. It's kind of like a fire. And I use this analogy a lot, call it the sexual fire. So if you imagine that you have these really big logs and you throw some petrol on them and you light it and they're gonna burn. But they don't burn for long because there isn't substance there, there isn't sustenance. But if you start slowly with this fire and you put some twigs and you light that, and then you add some sticks and you add and you add and you add, you have this inferno of pleasure and of sexual energy. But it needs time for that to happen. So when you can control your sexual energy, that's when that can get to much, much higher states of, of pleasure. And that's when orgasm becomes not secondary, but different, because then we start getting into different kinds of orgasms and even orgasmic states. So in expanded orgasm, we talk about this a lot. And an orgasm essentially is an event. It happens and then it's done. An orgasmic state keeps on expanding, keeps on moving, these waves of pleasure that move through your body. And in the expansion, it becomes a much more 
um, a much deeper experience of sexual consciousness because the nature of consciousness is the same as the nature of the universe to expand and our consciousness wants to grow wants to expand wants to have deeper experiences and when we stay in that in that friction sex um, it's like we're staying in the shallow end of the pool almost which is fine there's no it's not a um, it's not a judgment but to have the deeper experiences we need to leave that um, we need to leave what we know and go somewhere else and I said this we spoke about this a few weeks ago on a webinar um, that deep pleasure happens in the unknown healing happens in the unknown and when we're willing to go into the unknown in our bodies in our feelings in sensations even in intimacy and connection with someone else that's the expansion and that's where pleasure becomes this incredible and limitless and i really mean that limitless exploration and i say that from someone who has for the last 25 odd years um spent my life teaching and exploring and experiencing in sexuality and it really is limitless but we have to leave that safety to to have those experiences and one of the most beautiful ways to do that is to slow down now there's something interesting in this that when people try having sex really slowly often they say well we didn't really feel much and we got bored so what happens with that is this the first thing is um we don't feel much because we're so used to the friction that we're used to so if you're used to your clip being rubbed really hard and really fast which is what happens for so many women and someone touches you really gently you don't feel a whole lot in the beginning but if you're patient with that that sensitivity will awaken and then people say well we get bored and if we get bored it's because we're so used to that mental stimulation we're so used to the fantasy we're so used to our body doing what it does in this quick and fast and hard way and all of a sudden it's doing something different that is often quite subtle and that's one of the keys is to listen to the subtle um there's a, a beautiful teacher called maya luna and if you haven't um, seen already any of her work then look her up she's fabulous she talks so much about um the yoga of savoring and savoring is very much learning about subtlety and you know i wrote this piece and it was about slow subtle sex i was with some i was with my closest friends yesterday we were having coffee at a place we really enjoy going to and um had some really delicious cake and the subtle of these flavors and tastes that's where it really really happens it's like the big flavors you put it in your mouth and it's sweet okay you get that but then go underneath that and go underneath that and go underneath that and that's what the slowness will teach you in time and that subtlety becomes amazing um so i'll share this with you one of the things that i learned and this is the only way that i can describe it there is a point and it only happens in 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 really deep experiences it happens after quite a a long time of stimulation and
I've only experienced this with lovers. So I'm going to say that I don't think that this happens kind of in a, in a casual, um, like a, a more casual encounter. And there is this point, and if you don't get subtlety, then when this happens, you kind of won't be aware of it. And this is what it feels like. I don't know that this happens, but I can tell you what it feels like. It feels like the head of my cock drinks her nectar in. That's exactly what it feels like. There's almost a taste that goes with it, like deep in the back of my throat. And the sensation of that, the emotion of that is absolutely, it's indescribable. Um, it's the sensation, the emotion, the, the feeling, the energy of it, really. It's, it's literally, it's indescribable, so I won't even try. But it's only in the subtlety that we can have those experiences. So there's an intention that goes with this, the intention to explore, to learn, to go on a journey that allows for these experiences. And it takes time and it takes practice. So what a beautiful thing it is to to practice this and i know that people are going to say so i don't have a lover so how do i do this on my own well you do and that's its own beautiful journey because you are a sexual and sensual being full stop and you don't need a lover to be a sexual being yes it's beautiful to share that with someone absolutely but you are a sexual being all by your beautiful, amazing, magical self. And really learning about your body, really exploring your body in so many ways is an absolutely incredible journey. And when you spend that time doing that on your own, you actually, I think anyway, open the space for people to come into your life to have these experiences, have these experiences with. So it's an incredible journey, this slowness. And it's also important to understand that you probably are not going to do this every time you have sex because there's this banquet, this absolute incredible banquet of sexual experiences. And if you think about the fullness of your sexual being, your pleasure being, it has so many different aspects that long to be um, explored and experienced and expressed. So there's the fire, which might be the absolute beast, and it might just be the real fire sex. And there's the really gentle, and there's the really slow, and there's whatever kinks and fetishes are inside of you and everything, this amazing um, banquet of possibilities. And sometimes there is hard and fast and quick and come, and that is fabulous. It's about the fullness of our sexuality. And if we are just expressing it in one way only, we miss out on so much pleasure. And when we do this, when we explore in this way, and when we have these experiences, sexuality becomes an amazing path of, of growth, an amazing portal into, into ourselves, and ultimately into an expression of the divine. Um, the expression of, of, um, of sacred sex, of spiritual sex. You know, that's the, very much the path of, of neo-tantric sex um, and conscious sexuality is the expression of us as divine beings. And we're making love with not just our partner, but we're making love with life. And we're expressing the fullness of ourselves as 
the fullness of life. And there's a piece I'm kind of starting to play with in my mind, and it's about the fact that your yoni is the yoni of life, and your lingam is the lingam of life. And when we bring that to our sexuality, that changes so much. And in that expression of life is so many different ways to express our sexuality. Because if you look at life and you look at the elements, there's the fire. And the fire can really burn and consume. But it can also be really gentle and warming and comforting. So all of these elements have this incredible range of expression. And when we open ourselves to this, our sexuality becomes this incredible, limitless portal of expression and experience. Mm. Mm. Wow, that was a lot. I don't know quite we're going to go there, but that was a lot. That was really, really beautiful. So what do you guys think about that? Um, does it bring up any questions for you? Anything that you want to share? Anything you want to ask? Anything you want to say? You can unmute yourselves. You can type it into the, um, into the chat box. Thank you, Sheldon. Fascinated with the idea of subspace. Hmm, that's an interesting idea. It's going somewhere different, but we can talk about that. Okay. So that's quite interesting because in some ways, in a lot of ways, subspace is an expanded state of consciousness um, and is definitely a part of what we were talking about in terms of going to that place where you go into this amazing amazing place of, of expansion. Um, so in, in um, sub and dom play, in, in fetish play, in, in bondage and discipline play, subspace is that really deep space that a submissive in that experience will go to by totally giving over control um, and allowing themselves to really just expand into that space. So it can be incredibly beautiful. Um, really emotional, really deep, sometimes really healing um, in terms of what can happen in that. Um, and you really need to be with someone who understands that, who can really hold that space, um, whether it's a, a male or a female dom or a dominatrix, someone who can really get that and really be present in that and understand it because it's an experience of energy it's not an experience of the body the body is just kind of the the vehicle for that but it's so much about the energy it's about the intention it's about the space the setting everything around that contributes to that and really understanding of what somebody needs after that um, of how you come back from that space, the care that somebody needs in that is, is so, so important. Um, and yeah, it's fascinating. It really is um, beautiful. And it's a, it's a really exciting world to play in and a really exciting world to explore different aspects of yourself in that. And it's quite interesting. You know, one of the things that I do is called, a, I developed it called a sensual bondage massage. 
And we developed it at one of the sex expos a few, a few years ago. Um, a good friend of mine is a, is a dom and we were both at this expo and after the first day, um, it was just this feeling in the air. People were looking for something different to do. And we had a lounge where we were doing all these, these exhibitions and, and, and demonstrations. And I phoned him and I said, what do you think about this? And we spoke a little bit and we said, we're going to do it tomorrow morning. And we created this mixture of, of bondage and sensuality that worked amazingly. We ended up doing like six or seven shows a day of it to hundreds of people every time. Um, and now I teach it in a very gentle way because it's for me more about the sensuality and the sensation than anything else. And the interesting thing is <coughs> very often I do it with people as part of a journey of exploration and growth and healing and people who have never had any experience of this before get so excited by the possibilities of it because so much of our sexuality is inside of us that we've never really given ourselves permission to explore um and some of you guys are on a, a whatsapp group that i run and it's it's a it's a whatsapp voice note that goes out every day it's a thought it's a question it's about consciousness it's about healing it's about growth and sometimes it's about sex funny enough <laughs> and um there's a question i've been thinking about putting there which is how much do you trust yourself in pleasure how much do you trust yourself in sex not who you're with how much do you trust yourself to go to these different parts of you, to open these different parts of you, to explore these different parts of you? And it's much more about you than about anybody else. That's a really interesting question of how much do you trust yourself in pleasure? And how much do you trust yourself to let go of the control that you hold on to so tightly that lets you have this gentle orgasm instead of fucking exploding into space and absolutely disappearing in the universe? And then trusting yourself that you're gonna come back and if you don't, it's okay too, because what an amazing way to disappear. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty cool. Okay. Um, there was an interesting question. It's kind of connected to this in a way. So my intention with this was that it, it was going to be kind of more of a, a Q and A, and then the um, slow sex just kind of became um, stronger and stronger in the last couple of days. Ah, oh, Mark, that is fabulous. It's one of my favorite things. What's wrong with the male suck that we as guys avoid touching each other? It's such a big thing. Um, it's a huge, huge thing. And we've created this really fucked up space between men you know where we talk about sport we talk about politics and we talk about work we talk about business and we talk about our supposed sexual experiences which are often more fantasies than anything else and we don't really share intimately with men it's such a big thing and we've created this incredible distance um, between men for a lot of men it's fear-based it's fear-based that is um very much based on the label of if i touch you and i really enjoy it what does that mean does that mean that i'm gay and you know for so many men that's one of the worst things that can be and there have been societies in the past where Male contact, even male sensuality and even sexuality was an accepted part of male and masculine expression that had nothing to do with a label. And it's, a, it's really interesting. When I do the water flow massage, um, 
I have no idea on any given night, for example, and this happens on lots of workshops, but this is a beautiful example of it. I have no idea who is arriving. So there's a limited amount of numbers because the pool is limited. And my only concern, because a lot of the work is partner work, that there is an equal amount of people. So on any given night, there could be more men than women. And about four times a year, under sort of other circumstances, we do a water massage at least every month, sometimes more frequently. So people are in the pool um, and they are mostly naked. You don't have to be, it's always a choice and you do whatever is comfortable for you. And I'll see in a moment if I can find a picture of the water massage and put it up for, for everybody to see. Just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I know there are people here um, who have been to the water massage and um, oh, I have to, I had to have found this before. Let me see if I can find it here. I'm just looking for a picture of water massage to bring up. Anyway, um, no, that's not going to work. Anyway, um, now I got distracted. Okay, so what happens in the pool is because it's a touch experience, it's not a sexual experience and it's not a genital experience, but very often when there are more men and men on their own, then men partner up for this experience. That's what it is. And for so many men, this is the first time in their lives that they have touched another man, and very often another naked man. And what happens to these men in the space is amazing, because once they get over that resistance and that fear, and they relax into it, and what men talk about afterwards of the strength of another man, which is so different to holding or being held by a woman. It's not better, it's not worse, it's just different. The, the touch of a man's body is so different to that of a woman. And it becomes one of the most amazing experiences for so many men. The same thing in on massage workshops, that there will often be times where men will come on their own and they'll do massage with each other. And it's such a beautiful and opening experience. And I think for so many men, if we got past that, our lives would be so different. Our world would be so different because so much of the masculine energy as it's portrayed in the world, not the true expression of masculine energy, the the patriarchal energy and not patriarchal in terms of domination of of men over women but one of the expressions of patriarchal energy as it's expressed in our world is of separation and disconnect and our world thrives on creating that disconnect between people creating that separation because in that separation, very often there's judgment. If it's based on the color of our skin, if it's based on religion, if it's based on different countries, um, different cultures, so many different things. And we look at each other more in terms of separation than in terms of connection. We look more at what keeps us apart than what brings us together. And touch would be one of the most amazing ways for men to experience more of that. So imagine all of these men like dressed in military uniform facing each other across this battlefield without any weapons. And they just walk closer to each other, they walk closer to each other, they walk closer, they walk closer. And they're standing there and they look into each other's eyes. And all that you see is yourself there. And maybe they hug. It'd be so beautiful. And it is frustrating. Um, but it's such a huge and important thing. And I think it could make such a difference in our world. Even the, within our own society, um, 
you know, we have a society with such incredibly high levels of, of violence, of abuse and of sexual abuse. And so much of that comes from incredible anger and frustration in men that comes out in such aberrant ways. And men learning to have deeper touch with each other, I think can have such a huge impact on, on the male psyche, on male behavior, and what we can do in our world. Um, it's a huge thing and it's for me a big thing and you know most of my work is is with women because there's such a, a stigma with men um, learning about sex and having a sexual problem or a relationship problem and wanting to come and learn and to grow and when men come and do their work it is so beautiful it is so exciting so empowering and I celebrate it and I love it and that's regardless of the the um, orientation of a man, the sexual orientation. And when men learn to massage each other, the beauty of that is incredible because we see so much of ourselves in that. We learn so much of ourselves. And this is, it's really powerful. Um, I'm going to digress for a moment here. One of the things that comes out of, for so many people that I work with as part of, of healing and growth journeys is I teach them to massage other people. And so much of their own healing, their own learning comes from learning to do that. And being in that space with men, we learn so much about ourselves. And it takes courage for a man to, to go there because there is so much fear around that. But when it happens, it's so, so beautiful. When we do retreats just with men, hmm, there's a beautiful image came up from uh, one of the retreats we did in Mozambique. So the resort that we use, it's called Tartaruga. So after this, everybody, I'll tap it into the chat box, go and look it up because Maybe before the end of this year, we'll be able to go back to Tartaruga, which will be so cool. I can't wait. Ponto Malangan. Anyway, that's where it is. So just off the beach, there's a gazebo. And the one morning, I think there were we had about seven couples on the retreat. Seven or eight. Anyway. So we're standing on this gazebo just off the beach and it's quite private. So everybody was nude. They didn't have to be, but they were. And all the women were in one circle and all the men were in another circle. And one man stood in the middle of all of the men and everybody around him just slowly ran their hands down his body, just acknowledging this person. And I think for every man there, except one, it was the first time they had touched another, another um, naked man. And by the end of it, every single one of these men were in tears. The women were having this amazing sensual and erotic time because for them it was really natural and easy. But for these guys, it was such a deep emotional experience and so beautiful. So the possibilities are there, which is really, really fantastic. Wow, we've gone some deep places tonight. How's everybody feeling? Can you touch without touching a person? Yes, you can indeed. Um, so energy really isn't limited to time or space. And while we've been in this in this lockdown, um, and even beyond that, so I've been working with people from around the world doing doing healing work, growth work. Um, and part of this I've always done for a long time was doing some energy massage where you're touching someone, but they're not even there. They're not even in the same room. They're not sometimes on the same continent. And the feeling is so incredibly real. It's a different experience. Um, 
but you can do that indeed because the energy makes that possible. Um, it's not limited to, to everyone. Ah, that's beautiful, TB. Thank you. And yeah, it opens incredible possibilities. Um, I've been able to do orgasmic experiences with people where they literally um, have orgasms without being touched. Um, and I think on, on, on YouTube, there are a couple of energy orgasm experiences um, that you can watch where people show, um, they don't really teach how to do it there, but they show you energy orgasm experiences. And some of them are like these big, huge experiences. In, in real, real time, they're often kind of gentler, but whatever it is they are, they're, they're really beautiful and sometimes really huge and powerful. So yeah, the possibilities of that are, are endless. Because um, energy isn't limited. So once we understand that and we learn a little bit about how to do that, we can do amazing things with it. So beautiful. Um, semen retention. Ha, we were talking about this this afternoon on the prostate massage lesson. Um, so this is what I've gotten to with it. There's a very big difference between orgasm and ejaculation. And when a man understands that, that's when a lot of sexual pleasure starts to deepen and open and expand. So in a lot of neo-tantric teachings, in Taoist teachings, um, they very much focus on a man keeping his energy inside within himself rather than releasing it. And that's absolutely, it's absolutely fine. It takes a lot of practice to do that. Um, it takes quite a mind shift to do that. What's also important is to understand that there are times where the body needs to ejaculate. And there's a lot of research coming up that for prostate health, that's really important. So I think what I've gotten to is you need a balance of that. You need a balance um, of keeping the energy, of moving the energy through your body, of learning how to move the energy through your body. And when the desire to ejaculate is there, then to do that. Um, so that balance becomes important. And I think it's just, it's important not to get stuck into any, any kind of dogma about what you should or shouldn't do. And you really have to listen to your body and listen to your body today. And that can change over time. But when we do that, when we connect with ourselves and we really deeply listen to our body, we allow its natural expression. So for example, when you have that really slow sex that we were talking about, then for a man, orgasm becomes way out of that because there's so much of this amazing energy in your body that you just want to stay in that space um, and keep it there. So there's a balance in that. There's a rhythm and listen to your body and you will, um, you'll find that. Experience physical hurt by men. Don't my head. Men are always beautiful beings. Yeah. And if more men could see that, you know, there was a piece that I wrote, and if your body wants it, I'll find it. Um, it was a couple of years ago. And I've always had lovers who have called me beautiful and I've always said, thank you. And it just never kind of sunk in. And a couple of years ago, um, a lover said that to me and it went so deep inside and it became so emotional. And I realized that I had no idea what to really do with that. And it took quite a while for it to to settle inside. And for a man to accept himself as beautiful is, is a huge thing. And very often in the mirror of each other, we can see that. And that's not about the beauty necessarily of, of the face or of the body or the way the body looks. 
such a deeper inequality. Um, a very beautiful and, and very powerful things. Men are beautiful beings. Everybody is a beautiful being. And if we realized that and we saw it, we would live very differently. So that's beautiful. Men with physical disability, absolutely, Roger, absolutely everyone. There's a beautiful tantric expression. All, uh, there's one life, there's one being on this planet. That's me, that's you. We are life expressing itself in different ways. And in the uniqueness of who we are, in the beauty of who we are, life expresses through us. And it's so linked to, to what we were talking about just now, that idea of, of separation, that in that space, you are simply an aspect of me. And you know, there's a, a greeting that I teach couples as part of, of, of ritual, of, of, of neo-tantric ritual and sensual ritual. And by the way, on Saturday afternoon, for those of you who don't know, I'm doing a sensual massage lesson online. And this greeting, this ritual is part of that, that lesson. It's on Saturday afternoon. Um, and one line of the greeting is looking into each other's eyes and saying, I acknowledge you as an aspect of my self. And that's all that we are, aspects of each other. And when we see that, that's when that separation falls away. So that is really, really beautiful. Um, so thank you all for sharing with me tonight. We've been to some beautiful and wonderful places. Um, if you guys here are not on my mailing list, please visit my website, eroslife.co.za um, and subscribe to the newsletter. A lot of stuff goes out in the newsletter, um, links to lots of things. And um, couldn't find a link for last Saturday. Because no, what happened last Saturday? Nothing happened last Saturday, Lane. It's this coming Saturday. Nothing happened last Saturday. Um, so this Saturday coming, um, two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, next Thursday, I think we'll go into more of the questions that we've been asked. There were some really interesting ones about pegging, um, uh, strap-ons, how do I get my husband to be more sensual? What's female ejaculation? What is a cervical orgasm? That's an interesting one. And how can I feel more sexual more often? And, and more than that. So next Thursday, um, we will talk about those things. It's also a free webinar. Um, and any other questions that you have in the week, please message them to me, email them to me. Any questions that you have, please, please let me know. Um, and we can talk more. So thank you so, so much for sharing with me. Um, I am deeply appreciative of the space. One of the reasons that I do what I do is it allows me to express so many different aspects of myself. I don't know anything else in the world would allow me to do me in so many different ways. And thank you for sharing that with me. And um, I wish you all so much pleasure.